Okay, hear me out. I'm kind of over this whole Jesus thing. I was honestly never really that big of a fan in the first place. I hear there are so many different religions out there. I mean, one of them's gotta be right for me. I mean, I do already base a lot of my personality on Zelda. Why not religion too? Jesus, Muhammad, Buddha, Zeus, Thor, they are all such icons. But what does Zelda say about them? Nintendo's pedestal child of adventure games is no stranger to real-world religion, and some may even say the series wouldn't be the same without it. And guess what? They're right. With so many great faiths out there between Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, Roman, Hill, Shigi Miyamoto and co have had a seemingly endless supply of source material to steal and use in their adventure games. But which one's the best? Personally, I'm a big fan of gluttony, peace, and sitting crisscrossed. Maybe Buddhism is right for me. I think this guy looks like my kind of people. But does he Zelda? At a glance, Buddhism is all about the belief that humans exist to suffer, work hard, play nice, and become enlightened in doing so. So we're not really off to a great start. I mean, if we're not talking about chilling around and just eating all the time, what's so appealing about this whole Buddhism thing? Is it just the monks? <gasps> Breath of the Wild has those! At the end of every shrine in Breath of the Wild, we come face to face with one of these Sheikah monks. And might I say, they've seen better days. According to the good old internet, these monks are likely inspired by Buddhist monks from a long time before I was being considered to be made alive who underwent the practice of Soku Shinbutsu. Alright, uh, this sounds like something I should probably look into. This article seems promising. Let's dive in. I'm out. Soku Shinbutsu was a practice that was banned in the 1800s if that tells you anything at all. Essentially, monks would spend just over eight years working towards preserving themselves in some creepy mummified state by quite literally only eating things that come from a tree. And I'm not talking fruits or coffee here, so we're already skipping breakfast it seems. As if only eating wood isn't enough, they'd slowly reduce their consumption over time and they'd eventually stop drinking water just like a true gamer and after a little while longer, they'd literally be buried in a box and meditate until they died. Don't worry though, after this they'd go to heaven and other people would worship their corpse. Naturally. I might have to be out on this whole Buddhism thing. I thought it'd be prettier than... that. That's not ugly! One area in Zelda that really doesn't shy away from Buddhist themes is the ancient cistern. Between the chonkin Buddha head in the hub room and the abundance of lotus flowers which represent purity in this faith, the influences are clear. Geez, everything is so nice here. This is fantastic. I may be reconsidering this whole Buddhism thing. Oh, come on! I'd love to see how they're going to justify this one. This seemingly hellish underworld section of the ancient cistern, just below the serene, luscious corridors above it, heavily correlates with the Buddhist tale of the spider's thread. The story essentially says that Buddha was outside touching grass like a good religious figure should, and then he saw hell through a pond, much in the same way that Germans would see pinup girls at the bottom of their steins. He then saw this bad mofo writhing along down there with his homies. <laughs> it is me. Buddha then remembered when that guy did a nice thing that one time that guy did a nice thing, and he began to lower a single spider's thread into the water with the hopes of yanking his sorry ass out of hell. While sulking in the lake of blood, the guy saw the silver spider's thread descending from the sky, and he got as excited as I would after Piano Man comes on after a few drinks. He then started climbing and got even more excited, and he was probably singing Piano Man as I would after a few drinks, and he drew the attention of all the other sinners who started following him up the thread. He then got just as pissed as I would if somebody turned off Piano Man after a few drinks, and when he yelled at them, the thread that likely shouldn't have even held his weight snapped, and he, alongside all the other sinners, plummeted back into the pool of blood below them. Alright, so that was a really, really cool story. I guess I'll give Buddhism one more chance. After I sing Piano Man. So sing us a song, you are the Piano Man! Sing us a song tonight! Another game that tends to have tons of real-world inspirations for all the crazy, unique characters, themes, scenarios, and, uh, masks is Majora's Mask. Seemingly every interaction and item has a deeper meaning or story behind it. For instance, take the Stone Mask. It's inspired by... stones. There are rocks in the back of Buddhist art sometimes, right? Right? 
In all seriousness though, one of the coolest masks in this game is the Fierce Deities Mask. And that name alone makes me think it's got to do something with God or religion, right? And sure enough, the Fierce Deity that the mask is likely based upon is a Buddhist Kishin. Now I don't know about you guys, but I'd rather not Kish this thing. He looks spicy! These wrathful deities are the incredible hulks of Buddhism. They're all fun and games until you f*** up. Once you let your bad side shine like a blister in the sun, these things supposedly unleash their wrath in the name of compassion. That's because just like the American prison system, these guys, they just want to rehabilitate you by punishing you for any small mistake. I mean, who didn't love their strictest high school teachers? <laughs> no, I'm sorry, Mrs. Smith! Uh, okay, there's gotta be something cool in Zelda that's from or inspired by Buddhism. I mean, the three-day cycle in Majora's Mask could represent the cycle of death and rebirth, or reincarnation, that sounds reassuring. But everybody being stuck in Termina, whether dead or alive, due to their emotional attachments and ties, seems a little tough. If it's not for Link, they're all just gonna die and spend eternity in purgatory. That doesn't sound pleasant. I don't know, I've got a few more good years left in me. I think I probably want to hold off reincarnating for now. Maybe I'll give this Buddhism shot a thing again later, but right now I need to find a religion that works for me today! I don't know, I'm part Irish, I like Jameson and Guinness. I bet you their religion's a ton of fun! Aw oh, man, they're just Catholics! Okay, but how about before the majority of the country was Catholic, Anglican, and Presbyterian? About a millennium or so ago, they had their own mythology and a pair of dominant faiths. There were the Gauls, who had the gall to overtake a ton of Europe, but then they got squashed like a steamy dog turd under the foot of the Romans. And then, there were the Celtiberians. Or the Celts, for short. These folks did more than just some cool things with knots and stuff. They also had some gods based around some pagan deities, and the most prominent of which is Danu. The mother of the goddess of the people of the goddess Danu, yes, that's what they're called, draws heavy parallels to Hylia and the Hylians. While there's about as much known as this old faith as I know about Aussie Rules Football, I don't know anything about Aussie Rules Football. The naming conventions unfortunately seem to be the only correlation here, though. Damn, I had my hopes up, but I'm not gonna give up yet. If there's a way I can worship liver failure and potatoes, I've gotta exhaust every single resource! After reading more about the old Celts, one more apparent inspiration the Zelda team took was in the naming of Link's trusty steed. The Celts believed in an ancient horse god whose name was based on the Celtic words for epos, meaning horse, and ana, meaning on a. And this god of being on a horse was creatively named Horse Ana, or as you guessed it, Epona. And would you believe this? That's the horse he's naming the games! Alright, so I'm starting to think there might not be enough here. I need some more sustenance. Anybody else want hibachi? I wonder what the Japanese believe. The most prominent faith in Japan is Shintoism. This traditional Japanese religion centers around the belief that everyone in the world is good, but people are often corrupted by evil spirits that must be prayed away. Yeah, you see, I tried explaining that to my parole officer, but he still won't take my cool ankle bracelet off. I have no clue what this man wants from me. In this faith, they don't believe in one or even a handful of gods, but rather about 8 million individual spirits called kami. These spirits that are said to be of nature come in a few different types. There's Amatsukami, or the heavenly deities, Kunitsukami, or gods of the earthly realm, and ya o Yoruzu no Kami, or just countlessly many Kami. I don't know about you guys, but 8 million seems like a bit much to keep up with to me. Good thing about only 20 or so are notable, and at the top of that list is Amaterasu, or the sun goddess and the chief deity of the Shinto faith. And get this, it's kind of like the Hylian faith! The land of Hyrule was created by the three golden goddesses, who made everything and then ran away like I would when my parole officer catches me going for a walk. In classical Shinto mythology, the world was created by Izanagi and his Alabamian sister wife, Izanami. Once they finished their steamy cousin loving affair, resulting in the birth of, well, everything, they left this world with Amaterasu in charge of watching over it, much in the same way that Hylia governed the land of Hyrule after the creation of it by the Golden Goddesses. One more clear ideological theft is seen in the bloodline of the Hyrulean royal family beginning with Hylia, much in the same way that the Japanese royal family is said to begin with the Sun Goddess, despite her being a virgin just like all of us. Alright, so what I'm hearing right now is that I can basically worship the Hylian faith. Damn, too bad I'm deaf today. With Nintendo and many of its employees being Japanese, the Shinto parallels are more than plentiful. 
In the Wind Waker, we've got these slimy looking ass, cloud riding ass, overly windy ass, frog ass asses that are based on another prominent pair of kami in the form of Raijin and Fujin, the gods of thunder and wind. Both of these illustrious deities are often feared in Japanese culture, while Raijin is much more so than Fujin. They do both have some pretty juicy lore attached to them that links them to Zephos and Cyclos pretty neatly. While both of the talking frog gods that hail over the Great Sea are vaguely classified as wind gods, it's it's clear that Zephos is much more clearly linked to Fujin as he's the peaceful one who aids Link in controlling the winds much in the way that Fujin delivers gusts from his pouch and keeps the enemies of the Japanese at bay, cause you know, gotta stop those damn Mongolians. Cyclos on the other hand aligns more clearly with Raijin, who is the one that parents use to scare their children at times when they're young, claiming that he's gonna come after their belly buttons, I don't know, it makes sense apparently. And while Fujin is said to be able to conjure up a storm from time to time, that's kind of Raijin's whole shtick, much in the same way that Cyclos shockingly loves Cyclones, in the same way that I love breaking my parole. Now while those three kami seem pretty significant, what about the other 7,999,997 or so? The reason that there are so many of these is that because anybody can become a kami when they croak. That's because while they're said to be deities, they more clearly fall in line with the western ideal of spirits wandering the world. They say that everything in the world has a kami residing in it, and I'm talking everything. The breeze, rain, rocks, trees, water, dirt, fungus, bear shit, dog shit, horse shit. I've personally got dibs on becoming a bagel. With so many spirits around, you can't possibly pray to each one individually, and that's why there are shrines all over Japan that are meant for people to come and worship. And yes, the word shrine was meant to trigger you. In Breath of the Wild, the shrines serve as a test to the hero, and at the end of each one, Link receives a spirit orb. Once he has a handful of these relics, he can get down on his knees and start to please a goddess statue and receive a bonus to his health or his stamina. Many Shinto shrines, on the other hand, will have sculptures of kami within them, which people pray to along with the waterfalls, mountains, or other natural things around the shrines, which are said to be places in which kami reside. Praying at these shrines is said to lead to good fortune, although probably not in the form of heart containers or stamina vessels. Man, sounds like I probably need to get down on my knees and start praying. Aw oh man, but my knees hurt! Can't they just sit down? Hey, I don't care. If that's the only seat, I will take it. Eh, I mean a seat's still a seat. Ah, the hand coming out of the toilet. It's a classic. This idea, while unsettling as all hell, is based on some old Shinto folk tales about a few particular yokai, which as far as I can tell are just allegedly unworshipped kami. Uh, I don't know, I didn't do that much research. A few of these yokai toilet tales are centered around these spirits essentially haunting people, areas, and especially indoor plumbing. One story states that there was an elementary school with perfectly normal bathrooms, except for one. Nobody wanted to use this one. That's because it was spooky. One day, some little tubby kid had last night's Chipotle sneak up on him, and in order to avoid the blood stains on his tidy whities he beelined into the closest shitter. That just so happened to be the spooky one. After he expelled his inner demons, he went to wipe his ass, but there was no paper. And seeing as it was a Chipotle dump load, we all know that he needed some. That's when a voice comes out of nowhere offering him the choice of red or blue paper. Either way, this yokai offering up the paper kills him, either by dicing him up and turning him red or draining his blood and turning him blue. How pleasant. In Skyward Sword and Majora's Mask, Link isn't sapped of his life by these spirits, but rather he has the chance to sort of worship the hand. Anyways, these hands aren't offering butt wipes, but rather requesting them. Okay, I guess I'll just hold it for now then. <sighs> If I can't go to the bathroom, I may have to bail on this whole Shinto thing. God, I was so close! Maybe I should just get back to the basics. God, where's the bathroom? Ah, Christianity. A staple in the United States thanks to those damned pilgrims and the inferior British. Yeah, I said it. Take all your unnecessary use and get back to your tiny island. USA! USA! Wait, wait, what? The War of 1812? Okay, I take it back. Can I have a crumpet and some tea, please? Back in the olden days of the 1980s, when the Zelda series was in its pre-fetus, fetus, infant, and toddler stages, the franchise intended to have heavy influences from Christianity, if not just be set in a Christian land. While an original faith residing in the Triforce was established early on over the Christian ideals, the Western faith still butts its fat ugly head into Link's early adventures plenty of times. Just looking at the manuals and artwork for Zelda 1, 2, and A Link to the Past, we can see the letter T featured prominently. 
Between Link praying to a cross, the image on his shield, or the item in Zelda 2, Hyrule seemed to love themselves some tea. And no, not the British kind, but please don't be mean to me. I mean, this doesn't seem too out of line, though. Most middle-aged fantasy-themed media leans heavily into Christianity, seeing as the era that they're trying to capture depicts that Jesus guy a good bit. And with Hylians pretty neatly falling into the category of elf shit, this isn't too surprising at all. Alongside all the nods to crucifixion, my favorite, we have plenty of sanctuaries that are pretty clearly just western places of worship in Zelda 2 and A Link to the Past. These sanctuaries are said to be watched over by sages in the North American and PAL versions of these games, but in Japan, I'm no translation expert, but based on what I've found, they're straight up just priests and churches. And I'm not talking the chicken chain kind, although that would be a slick crossover. Another presumed Jesus thing can be seen before entering the desert palace in A Link to the Past. The hero has to pray before gaining entry to the series, and he has to give a nod to the Holy Trinity in order to gain access. Sure, in hindsight, he could have been praying to the Golden Goddesses, but they hadn't been established at the time of this game, so for now, it's your boy Jesus. Get over it. While we're talking trinities, why not look at the most iconic one in Zelda with the Triforce? Sure, there are a ton of things it could be, but looking at the Celtic Trinity knots, there's a definitive parallel between this triangle and this one. These Celtic trinities are known to represent the good lord himself, sweet baby Jesus, and some ghost or something, I don't know. But the parallel of threes could definitely correlate, but honestly, this could go hand in hand with a lot of things, so just take it with a grain of salt. Guys, I still really need to pee. Is there a bathroom somewhere around here? <sighs> Fuck it, I'm just gonna use this one. Alright, how do I use this thing? Normally, you'd start with, forgive me, father, for I have sinned. Oh, fuck it, I'm oh, just gonna go! What are you doing, my child? No, no, stop it! Oh, dear God! So, I've been excommunicated. Jeez, I need to find a religion fast. I'm planning on dying in 60 to 80 years. How else am I gonna know what's gonna happen to me? All right, how about Hellenism, this ancient Greek religion? Seems pretty cool. I like Percy Jackson. Let's see, so there are Cyclops enemies in Zelda, and a lot of enemy designs seem to come from Greek mythology. That's neat. Ooh, and the Pegasus boots are inspired by the story of Hermes. That's cool. Wait, what do you mean nobody follows this religion anymore? Damn. Okay, well how about Hinduism? If a billion people in India alone believe in it, it has to have some merits, right? So we've got snake imagery in the desert dungeons, like the Spirit Temple and the Arbiter's Grounds, and I don't know about you, but I love things with two arms or less. Also, Sahasrila and his brother Agana are named after chakras. I did yoga one time, and I hate blocking things! We're off to a great start, this could be good! Ooh, and Kalakdos has Hindi origins?! Oh, that's too many arms. I'm out. Okay, maybe I should look into Islam. It's kind of like Christianity, right? What do we have here? The Gerudo women are modeled after Middle Eastern stereotypes, which tend to have Islamic ties. Okay. Ooh, and the Ocarina of Time mirror shield initially had an Islamic crest on it. I'm narcissistic enough to love a good mirror. Oh, and what's this last thing? There was a controversy about an Islamic chant being in the Fire Temple. Man, why did it have to be the Fire Temple? I hate fire! It's so hot! Holy damn, there are so many religions out there, and why does nothing make sense, and why is it all based on Zelda? Oh my god, this is overwhelming. I can't deal with it. I need help. I'm gonna lose it. Ah! I'm apostatharian now.